I'm just going to do a quick introduction about this lounge in particular. So we call it the Skyline Lounge. As you can see, we have a background that changes every 20 minutes, showing six different cities around Europe. Our specialty in this bar are martinis, big 12-ounce martinis. We have a twist that represents all these cities we actually show in the back. Of course, uh, all my other drinks are also my specialty, nice old passion, mojitos, margaritas. The only thing I cannot make is uh, piña colada because I don't carry a blender. But if you want to shake it on the rocks, then we can make it happen. So welcome you all to my mixology. Today I have Joel from Peru assisting me during my class today. And I have Seth from Philippines also assisting me. Today. My name is Carlos, everyone. I'm the bartender in the Skyline Lounge. And I'm from Chile. That's the right way to say it, everyone. Not Chile, like usually people say, you are from Chile. That's what we actually put in our food. Actually, our country looks like a big Chile on the map, so maybe there is some coincidence with that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't even that spicy that much. So, uh, welcome to our class, everyone. I'm just gonna do a quick introduction about our bar. So because we used to actually backpack back in the day, invite our guests behind the bar, making the drinks for everybody, which was a little bit too dangerous because when we were teaching our guests to actually do the pouring, they were doing one, two, three, four. <laughs> so all the drinks were a little bit too much on the alcohol with a touch of juices, and then everybody was ready to sleep right after the session. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a little bit. <laughs> yeah? Now it's a little bit more balanced drink because when it comes to mixology, is the fancy way we describe our job, which is the art of mixing. Cocktails have come a long way. Before, back in the day, we used to only play with few berries, but now we have a lot of tropical fruits available, a lot of different juices. Infusion, especially in this bar, we like to work a lot with rosemary, basil, cucumber, different kind of ingredients, and also the combination, right? When it comes to products also, we have a lot of different interesting products, right? Melon, coconut. How you combine these ingredients together is when you come with a nice cocktail. Maybe some of the cold that you have tried today, you haven't tried them before, so we will find maybe some new flavors for you as well. So I'm just gonna present quickly my bar tools, everyone. So this is the shaker, right? That's what we use to shake our cold and make our martinis. Some of you have seen the three part one, but it's actually very hard to use because when it gets cold, it's very hard to separate. You're struggling with that. This one in particular, actually, you just need to get used to it, but it's actually quite easy to handle. As you can see, it doesn't fit because you need to tight seal. Of course, go with the ice, and then you see it doesn't separate. I can, I can shake it, I can move it around, and it's not gonna separate unless you practice your karate shop right there. Please, if you are using it at home, it takes some time to practice. Don't use your forehead, that's kind of dangerous. Some people get upset with that, and then they are trying to separate with that. Not a good idea. The long bar spoon, right? Classic, classic and basic uh, bar equipment. Very easy, especially you, sometimes you have some glasses, they are quite long, you need a, a long bar spoon so you can easily go to the bottom of your glass. Also, you can use it with one hand once you get used to that, and even has some other functionalities, such as this flat end. I lose my mother, right, I want to make my mojito. I cannot make my mojito, no, but you can still improvise using your bar spoon. That's why it has a flat end, so you can actually improvise using this, in case your mother run away. <laughs> Then, this is the actual mug, right? This is the tool we use when you might to make your nice mojitos, nice caipirinhas, even for the old fashioned, right? You want to squeeze the nice juice out of the orange with the cherry. This is the tool we use, everyone. And what are these two? Strainers, right? Why, why two strainers? Why not only one? Because as I said, now we have some very interesting martinis out there. We want to use some fruit, we want to use some some other vegetables, but you don't want those pieces to go inside your drink, right? That's why we have a secondary strainer. So whenever you are using cucumber or using herbs, you don't want those pieces. That's why everything is gonna stay this, and only the flavor is gonna go to your, to your martini, because you want your martini to look be clean, right? You don't want all those pieces of fruit inside. And then, last but not least, the most hated bar too, right? How we call this one? Called the jigger, the jigger. We need to use it because, as you know, we have some products on board with a little bit over the price, like uh, back in Meridian, some whiskey, some bourbon, like uh, $200 and even more. Every time somebody ordered that, I'm a little shaking a little bit, you know, if I put a little bit of extra, then Mick is gonna be pretty behind my back, giving me a nice call, you know? So we, that's the tool we use. But even without that tool, 
sometimes we see we are using our our pores, right? This one actually is very easy to do a mental count. Not one, two, three, four, but when you count out to four, one, two, three, four means equals one ounce in general. Then when you count out to six, means a shot, ounce and a half. So then you can play, especially with the ratio when you are making a cocktail. Because when it comes to make a cocktail, yeah, alcohol is fun and everything, but you try to find the balance between the products. That's why we always have something called the base in our cocktail. So we are gonna start with our first cocktail, everyone. You see after a while, everything that has some sugar and juices start to separate. So please, unwrap your straws, please. Straws. Whatever you want. We are gonna give you some straws, so unwrap it first, and then just uh, steer your drink. So it's gonna hand you some straws. So we are going to do a little bit of a, a blind tasting. This cocktail in particular has eight different ingredients, juices and alcohol together. So let's see if you are able to pick up the flavor for this one before I tell you the name of the drink we are actually having. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I stir it nicely, stir it nicely. All right, so once you all have your straw, give it a nice tip. Let's try it all together. And then let's see if we are able to recognize all the flavors inside. It's a very flavorful mango. drink. Mango. Mango, very good. There is some mango into that. What else? Which other juices you can feel? Please? Pineapple. Pineapple, mango, pineapple. There's like a cinnamon. Yeah, very good. There is some apple cinnamon also into the drink. Cinnamon goes very well with this flavor from cinnamon, pineapple, mango, and one more juice. What's the one that he said is very aphrodisiac, right? It has a, even the name itself is about that. Lychee. I don't know why. Passion fruit, right? Passion fruit. So yeah, also known as maracuja in some countries like in Brazil. Passion fruit also is present in your code. So, passion fruit, pineapple, mango, and the touch of cinnamon. Those are all the juices. And now it has a lot of different alcohol as well. So as I mentioned, every cocktail needs some time to have a base. You can work with as many ingredients as you want, but there is always something which is gonna be most of the strength into your cocktail. In this one is a spice rum, which is the Kraken from Trinidad and Tobago. Heavily spiced, a little bit stronger than Captain Morgan as well. Way more spice as well. Hello? Over there. Oh, don't worry, we're just in the first. You still have time to cut <laughs> So cracking in this case is a heavily spiced drum. Lot of nice notes of ginger, some cinnamon cloves. It goes very well in tropical cocktails. And also be mindful, it has a 94% proof, so it's 47% of alcohol. So it will give a lot of strength too. Oops. Also, in your cocktail, we have the Malibu, which we know is a very famous coconut flavor rum. Yeah. And one more ingredient also into that, which is this one right here, which is an Italian liqueur flavored with the amaretto, some almonds into that. So it's a very flavorful combination of a lot of different flavors. So what's the name of this cocktail? So it's not part of our Disney cocktail list, but it's a very famous cocktail in, internationally. It's known as Zombie. Wow. So it has a lot of different varieties depending on the bartender making. In fact, the original recipe for this one, it used to go with the float of the Bacardi 151, which is discontinued in a lot of countries because of the highly alcohol content. This glass used to be serving a nice totem glass with fire around the ring, but, and actually the name is because of that reason. The original one, you were only limited to drink only two, because if you were drinking more than two, you get the idea, right? You will be actually in the bar as an actual zombie. 
It's a light thing, it's a little bit of a lighter version of the zombie, it still is quite strong. You know, I always say rum cultures are very dangerous because you go over the sweetness of the juices and you don't really feel the alcohol that much. And they say, oh, it's a very light, you know. And then you drink two of these and then you are actual zombie after a little bit of this tropical cultures. Did you get to try our uh, the famous cultures on this island? They have a signature one in Tortola and they have a signature one also in St. Thomas. Has anyone heard about the yeah, the painkiller, right? No. What is a painkiller? Does anyone know? Nutmeg. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very signature cocktail in the Caribbean, made usually with different kinds of rum, like dark rum, light rum, some overproof rum sometimes on the top, orange juice, coconut cream, and nutmeg on top. It's a very flavorful, also dangerous kind of cocktail because a lot of sweet notes and you don't really feel the alcohol much, and it goes by level. If you ask in Tortola for a painkiller, they will ask you which level do you want? Number two, three, and four. I asked last time there is no level one. No, we start with the two. <laughs> <laughs> it's two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. Oh, the little seed right there. As you realize, there was a seed floating around your glass. That is a cardamom seed. So when you decorate a cocktail, we have three different kinds in the bar. An umbrella, we call decoration. You don't need the umbrella, right? It's just to make your drinks look pretty. Then you have something called garnish, which you can eat, such as sherry, an orange. You can take it from the glass and eat it. And you are not supposed to eat that seed. It's something called an ornament. Ornaments are just something to give you aroma. Same when you ask for a martini with a lemon twist, right? You don't want to eat the lemon twist, but you want the oils of the lemon to give you some aroma. The same. The cardamom seed here is just for that purpose to give you a nice aroma into the content. So coming up next, everyone, we have our our bubbles, right? A little bit of champagne content. Let's talk a little bit some nice ideas. When it comes to make champagne, yeah, maybe. Of course, we call them champagne cocktail, but you don't actually go for champagne, right? You don't use your Dom Perignon, that in your all this nice French champagne. Maybe you are saving those expensive bottles for a special occasion. But sometimes you find in the liquor store some very inexpensive Prosecco from Italy, Cava from Spain. And there is a lot of different ways you can find new combinations, right? Think about the easy ones. What are the ones you usually drink in the morning when you want some vitamin C? <laughs> mimosa. Right? And we call it a mimosa, right? Uh, what about the famous Italian one called Bellini? What's in a Bellini? <laughs> Exactly, just some fresh fish puree along with your sparkling, but even those you can spice it up a little bit. You can make it a royal bellini if you actually use some vodka or fish nut, just to be a little bit more alcohol flavor. Even mimosa, you can add some uh, orange vodka, a little bit of vodka, just to make it a little bit, a little bit more spice, a little bit more strong. So the next cocktail we are gonna have is a nice combination of two flavors that goes very well with your champagne, everyone. So let's try it all together and uh, let's see if you are able to pick up what do I, did I need for this content. Yeah. Lemon. Lemon in it? Mm -hmm. Some lemon flavor, right? Yeah. You put some peach as well? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it has some lemon and peach flavor coming from two different products. So the lemon flavor go for this one right here. Very famous Italian liqueur, the limoncello, to give you this nice lemon flavor. And then the peach come for the peach nut. So we have peach nut, limoncello to give you lemon flavor, and the rest we just top it up with our Prosecco. Always though, when you are making champagne cocktails, you don't feel half the glass with limoncello or vodka and then top it up with champagne. That's when I'll be making something else. Everything goes in a little bit of proportion. Half an ounce, three quarters of an ounce, and so on. But you can always play with the ratio depending on what you are looking for. Also, the style of champagne is very important. Champagne comes in different styles. Most of the time, if you are making champagne concepts, you are trying to find some balance. So you go for a dry, also known as the brute style of champagne. Moscato base, usually a very sweet grape variety, it will make your cocktail overly sweet. And you always try to find the right balance whenever you are making a cocktail, everyone. So keep that in mind whenever you are making a champagne cocktail.
You know which one is one of the oldest champagne cocktails out there? One of the first ones made? It was something called the French 75. Have you heard about that? So you know, back in the day, most of the cocktails used to go around the same ingredients. There was not much fruits, not many liqueurs out there, and it was just a, little, a lot of lemon juice and was a bitter. So there is a cocktail called the French 75, which goes with gin, fresh lemon juice, little bit of sweetener and top it up with some Angostura bitter. It's a classic champagne cocktail, one of the first one ever made. Oh, how we call this one? So this is one of our creations and we call it the Limoncello Spritzer. You want to, if you want to put some ice on it just to make it more refreshing, you can also do the same. Who likes Aperol Spritz in here? Another very famous champagne cocktail. Who likes the Italian cocktail known Aperol Spritz? Mm -hmm. Have you heard about that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the Aperol Spritz? Yeah, uh -huh. It's an aperitif from Italy with a lot of orange flavor. Also goes very nice with champagne and a little bit of soda water. You garnish with an orange. And then you have another very famous champagne cocktail. We know it as the Aperol Spritz. So now we have a very fun cocktail. There's a lot of different ways you can actually give a lot of flavor to this one. It's the one in which we use this style, right? How we call this technique, everyone? Muddle. Muddle, right? Muddling technique. So, which is one of the most famous cocktails out there using this method? Mojito. Mojito, right? One of the most famous cocktails out there. A lot of different ways you can make it. But mojito is a very simple cocktail. What do we need to make a mojito? What are our ingredients when you want to make one? Mint, what else? Uh -huh. Lime, sugar, we need our rum, and club soda. So it's a very basic uh, recipe. But why some mojitos taste so bad sometimes? They taste so bitter. What do you think is the crucial part when it comes to make a mojito? The meat, exactly. The meat is very important. First, it needs to be fresh. When it's already dark, it's already bruised, it's not going to make a good mojito. Also, it's how you treat the meat. That's why my this is very important. Think about it. Maybe you are having a bad day, somebody asks you for a mojito, and then you're doing like this, right? You are destroying that meat. You are destroying the meat, and it's going to release a lot of natural bitters oil. So that mojito cannot be saved anymore. You need to treat it gently, right? You muddle it, you are just trying to press the meat. Actually, try to do the same exercise at home. If you don't feel confident with your modeling techniques, when you put the mint close to you, it doesn't have a strong smell. Give it a nice slap, then smell it again, and you will see it's releasing all the aroma. You can drop it back in your glass, and then it's the same as you did in the beginning when you are making your mojito. Also lime, right? Lime, lemon, I always said any citrus you have available. In Chile, limes are very expensive. Usually we use a lot of lemon. We don't have any limes on there. And sweetener. Simple syrup is one of the most famous ones out there, but on the ship we don't have simple syrup. Instead, we use this one right here, which is an organic sweetener we know as the agave nectar. Which product is also made from the same plant, a very famous spirit? Tequila. tequila, right? Tequila is also a distillate beverage coming from the same agave plant that grows in Mexico, everyone. Now, this mojito, though, doesn't have rum. I try to twist it a little bit. I use another product that for me gives a very interesting flavor. So rum is the most popular choice when it comes to make a mojito. Instead, I decided to use this one right here. We tried in the mojito caipirinha tasting yesterday. So this is called the beef is an acai berry liqueur, also made in Brazil. Acai berry is a very exotic food that just grows in Brazil. It has a lot of tartness with a little bit of fruity note. It's a very versatile product and it goes very well with a lot of different fruits. So that's to give most of the strength in your culture is the beef acai berry. Also, I muddle something in there besides the lime, besides the besides the the, the mint and the lime. What do you, what do you think I muddle into there? Are you able to recognize? Yes, You have some blueberries and blackberries. So you see some muddled berries also along with the mint, along with the lime to give you a nice flavor. And also, I use this one also in your mojito. Chambo, a very famous, also French liqueur. What's the flavor of this one, everyone? Yes, raspberry, but it's, it's, there is more than just that in this little bottle. First, 
it has a very strong base. It's not a neutral spirit which has been flavored. It's cognac. This is cognac which has been flavored. So it has a lot, it's, it's, it's on the strong side, it has a lot of fruity, very powerful notes. Also it has been flavored with black, uh, blackberry, raspberry, and some vanilla. So it's a very delicate layer of different flavors. And there's a lot of different ways you can play with this bottle. Use it in a champagne cocktail, you can use it in your mojito. There is a famous martini out there called the French martini, which is a very simple recipe. Grey goose vodka, chambord, and pineapple juice. Very fruity, lot of flavor. It's a very another very famous martini we can always make in here is with the chambord, is the fresh martini. In the case of this mojito, everyone, how do we call it? So it's a variation on your classic mojito, of course, and we call it the Bra uh, Brazilian boom. <laughs> Brazilian boom. And of course, it's one of our creations in here. You go to another bar, you ask for that. They're gonna say, "What are you talking about?" They can always give me a call and they can call, they can ask me for the recipe in here. So if you want to try it somewhere else, maybe they can uh, they can always give me a call. Of course, most of the bar we can prepare this one. Usually, at the bar who carry all the fresh fruits and herbs, right? such as meridian, such as here, we got all these nice fresh ingredients to make all these uh, very refreshing cocktails. <laughs> So what are we missing everyone? We still have two more cocktails to talk about. Which are the two styles we are missing? It was really fun when we got to Spain. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was like a high <laughs> So now we have the one with the V-shape right there. How do we call that? Martini. martini, right? Very confusing, especially for bartenders, because martini is a glass, martini is a cocktail, and martini is a and literally everything you put in a martini glass is technically via martini. But for me, it's not the right thing because let, so think about the proper classic martini. What is essentially a martini? It's straight up alcohol, right? It's straight up alcohol. You don't have any juices or anything. You are just filling your vodka, your gin. Vermouth used to be a very important part of a classic martini, but for a reason, nobody seems to like it anymore. <laughs> Every time I ask for a martini, they said, no vermouth, no vermouth, no vermouth. I feel so bad for the bottles of vermouth, they can be sitting here for years and nobody get to finish them. <laughs> <laughs> so, keeping that in mind, I always said, all martinis are supposed to be strong. Why the reason people like to drink martinis is because you are looking for something strong. Compared to the first style of cocktail, we use a lot of fruit, lots of different flavors, you conceive all the alcohol content based on the sweetness. Martinis, on the other hand, are very honest cocktails, right? You are getting most of the alcohol flavor into that. That's why there is a common mistake made with a lot of martinis. Think about a cosmopolitan, right? What is a cosmopolitan? What's the recipe of a cosmopolitan? Cranberry juice. Exactly, vodka, cranberry juice, little bit of lime juice, and also the triple sec or insecure. But I think to overly red cosmopolitan that are essentially cranberry juice with a splash of vodka. <laughs> that for me is not a proper cosmo, everyone. A proper one is supposed to be a little bit of cranberry just to have a nice pink color, not a red color. So all martinis to me, of course there is no a guideline or anything, but for me are all supposed to be more on the strong side because they are supposed to pay tribute to the original and classic martini. So in this case, everyone, who knows the lemon drop? Uh -huh. Well, this is a twist on the lemon drop. I talk like a, I like to use a lot of herbal infusion. So in this one, you have an herbal infusion along with a different flavor that goes very well with the lemon. So let me give you a clue. I call this twist on the lemon drop an Italian martini. Exactly. Basil is the we usually associate a lot with Ita Italy, so there is some basil infusion into this martini. Also, I didn't just use lemon flavor. There is another vodka that I use with a different flavor that goes very well with this lemon. Pear. Pear, very good, so pear. So this variation of the lemon drop has some absolute pear present into your martini. Actually, I put limoncello too, to give a little bit more of the lemon flavor. So what do we have in this martini? Our base, of course, is the absolute pear. Most of the cocktail is based on the absolute pear. You have the use of the limoncello, little bit of agave, fresh lemon juice, 
and the herbal infusion. When you are using infusion, that's what I talk about. This tool is very important. So I model inside, of course, my basin, the same as I do a mojito, right? I model, I release the aromas, then I put everything here, I will shake it, and then I will double strain it so you don't get any piece of basil in your actual MRT. So how we call this one, everyone, is an Italian martini, another one of my specialty drinks in this lounge. Not in the menu, of course, this is another one of my favorite ones to make. Italian martini, Italian. Italian martini. And of course, if you ask for one of those, that's a tiny, tiny thing, right? Here we will have a big 12 ounce one, those are our regular size for martini, so you get a little bit more of a bigger version. So, we are missing now the most dangerous style of culture, right? How we call this one? A shot. <laughs> a shot, right? A shooter style of drink. Dangerous, right? Usually we all have very good... Why people start to drink shots in the first place? I never understood, right? <laughs> like, that's why we all hate Jose Cuervo Paul because it gives us a lot of bad memories and experience working there, right? <laughs> But there is some actual fun shots over there, you know, it always depends. Let's think about some fun classic shots. Oh, of course the one with the good names, right? We know a lot of shots they have very adult triple X name, we have a focus on the more family friendly ones, right? We have like the baby Guinness, which is some Kalua and Bailey's on top. This one in particular is a very interesting liqueur we use for this one. We call, you know how we call this, this shot, everyone? We call it a mini beer. <laughs> because it has the same color as you are drinking a Corona Lager beer, right? <laughs> and it goes with the nice uh, froth on top, so we call it the mini beer shot. Very simple combination, very simple ingredient. So on the bottom of your glass, you have this one right here. Have you, have you seen this bottle before? So it's a very famous uh, liqueur made in Spain, and they call it Licor 43, Licor 43. It's a secret recipe, but there is a lot of uh, errors, a lot of vanilla, so it's more of the sweet forward. If you put this in a margarita, you make the actual very famous steel lime margarita, which goes with these ones inside. So you can use it for some very fun drink. So that's on the bottom of your glass. And then, of course, we have our always <laughs> nice Baileys, right? What doesn't go well with Baileys? You can use it in everything, right? Put in your ice cream, put in your coffee, put in your fruit. It goes well with everything. Irish cream, the Baileys. Also, you may think to make layer sculptures are really hard, right? Because you need to try to separate with the spoon. Actually, all these ones are very easy to make because the Baileys is not going to separate from the top when you pour it slowly because of the sugar content. Baileys has less sugar than this, so it will stay naturally on top. You don't even need to do a, a bar spoon. Then you can store it in the fridge and then it's ready for your guests if you want to make a fun shot. So it's time to try it, everyone, right? It's going to be a very interesting combination. So raise your glass, everyone. Salud. It's good, right? It can be a nice dessert drink. If you don't want to try, I always say every shoot can be also made a different style. If you mini beer, mini beer, it's called a mini beer. If you want to have it on the rocks, maybe you want to keep it, you can actually do it that way. If you want to make it a shot, so it's a very fun, it's a very fun you can use it in a lot of different ways, everyone. So my last information I wanted to share with you uh, is about when it comes to mixology, we need to try to be creative. Now, especially nowadays, we have a lot of different liqueurs, lot of different flavors, so it all depends. Maybe think something creative, right? Cucumber, air, there is a lot of different ways you can actually play with your martini. I hate cucumber, but I love the flavor of cucumber in drinks. I cannot cucumber myself just like that, but I love it in drinks. It's a very nice touch to it. 
So everyone, we are going to do the last check to see. Just raise your hand if you like it. You can raise it five times, three times to see if we all agree as we have a favorite of the class. So our first cocktail that we tried, everyone, was the zombie, our bill cocktail. All right. Then our number two, our champagne cocktail, limoncello spritzer. All right. Actually, champagne is not even the most famous or it's, it is fun. I mean, you can actually spice it up a little bit. Then we have our third cocktail, our model in the Brazilian boom. All right, Brazilian boom over there. Then our Italian martini with the basil and lemon infusion. This is some martini lovers also are there. <laughs> we need more. We need to make more of that martini, yeah. Yeah, I get I get a twelve ounce one. And then our shot that we just had the mini beer with the liqueur for and the Kahlua. It's a very tasteful. As I said. Mix it in a margarita with a tequila and you make a very nice key lime margarita also. It's a very good product if you want to spice up your margarita as well. So, uh, any questions? Good, thank you. Everything good? Yeah. You like our content? Yeah. So everyone, uh, as I said before, we were allowing the guests. Now it's more like a presentation. I hope I give you some tips along the way. Be creative, always practice a lot. You know, it's just like cooking. Yeah, and everybody was a little bit too drunk maybe. <laughs> 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 but it will come back eventually. That's part of my thought. You know, it's even like the mask, right? We're still wearing the mask for the same reason. So, uh, we open our bar 5.30 for service until 12.30. If you want to come later on to get one of these cocktails or something else, please, I'm more than welcome to make it for you. So thank you all for joining my class today. It was a pleasure, everyone.